Greetings everyone. So I wanted to elaborate here on the kinds of actions that matrices have on vectors and in particular some aspects of the Fibonacci problem uh, of this week that may not have been immediately apparent to you. For example, you may not have known that pineapples are actually mathematical objects. Uh, Fibonacci numbers dictate the number of spirals that appear on the skin of the fruit depending on how you count the spirals you see Fibonacci numbers appearing 8 spirals in one direction and 13 in the opposite direction and 21 spirals if you count them vertically. Uh, so I wanted to first discuss the generalization of the Fibonacci series to other series that sum uh, the last elements in essence recursive series and then I wanted to discuss the actions of a matrix whose main diagonal is shifted by one row and uh, when we combine these two aspects we then can see how we use them to solve the problem where we sum the last m elements of a series after multiplying each element by a given coefficient. In a series we get a number that is a sum of the numbers that come before it. So that is a recursive series so called. In this series for example we combine the last big N numbers uh, into x n plus 1, so the next element of the sequence. Notice the index here is, uh, of the last element that we're combining is x n minus n plus 1. Where does that plus 1 come from? I hope that you're able to figure that out. Uh, if we are using the last five elements of the series, then uh, so if um, small n is say 20, then the last element we're combining is going to be 16. Let's see the, if you can see that. So for example, if our n is 20, uh, small n is 20, and the number of elements we're using on our series is say 5, uh, you can see here that our next element in the series 21 is going to be a function of element 20, 19, 18, 17, and 16. We have then five elements, and so we have here that our last element is x of n minus n plus 1. I hope that that's clear. Now our series doesn't necessarily have to have uh, simply the sum of the last five elements. It could also multiply each of the five elements by a certain coefficient. And so here we number the coefficient c1, c2, c3, until cn. This operation is really easy to encode. A vector vector multiplication, a row vector that has these elements xn to xn to minus n plus 1. If we now have a vector of the coefficients that we're using to multiply c1, c2, c3, da -da 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 -da, until cn, we can simply multiply it by the column vector with the last elements of our series, xn, xn minus 1, xn minus 2, all the way until x of n minus big N plus 1. Which gives us our new element xn plus 1, just as defined up here. In the case of the Fibonacci series, our nx plus 1 is equal to n x n plus x n minus 1, which makes our coefficients c1 and uh, c2 are 1 and 1. That's why we give in the project our c vector of coefficients being simply 1 and 1. And naturally, to be able to compute the nth element of the sequence, we will require the two preceding elements. So that's why uh, we cannot compute x1 and we cannot compute x2 because x2 only has one element behind it and x1 uh, has no elements behind it. So we then explicitly define them in the Fibonacci series. 0 and 1. If your series has any number of preceding elements, then naturally uh, you will need to define explicitly what these initial uh, numbers might be.
So if you have, for example, a series that uh, integrates the last five elements, then the first five elements have to be defined beforehand by your own hand. And now before we put this all to use uh, in computing the Fibonacci's, uh, the recursive version of the Fibonacci series, I want to quickly discuss with you the action of a matrix that is off-diagonal, where the main diagonal is shifted one row down. And before we do that, I just wanted to quickly remind you what the identity matrix does. I mean, obviously oh, you all will know what the identity matrix does, but if you have all of the elements of the main diagonal equal to 1 and all of the other elements equal to 0, uh, elements here, they are represented by big zeros, but ultimately uh, we just fill it in. I mean, this is the identity matrix. You will all remember how the identity matrix looks like. But now, if you take any vector here uh, that goes from x n to x, say has l m n uh, rows and n columns, the identity matrix will be x n minus n plus one. This will result in the exactly same vector, right? So identical to the vector we are multiplying. So this is A, the output is A. Now what happens if our main diagonal is shifted by one row? So now uh, we are not multiplying the first element by the first element of the vector, but by the second. So our first, let's make our first um, column here. Second column Let's make it very explicit. And so let's imagine that we have a simple vector here uh, with elements 1, 2, 6. So what happens uh, when you multiply one by the other? I don't need to do this as explicitly, but I think it is good to do this explicitly at least one time. First, ask yourself, what is the resulting shape of the vector we will be getting? I mean, if you don't know that, give it a thought. And if you figure out there's a column vector, you're right, of course. Uh, if you take here, then, uh, the multiplication of this vector by the first row vector, so the column by the row, you will notice that our resulting vector is picking out of the original vector first the last element. If you don't see why that's the case, allow me to copy here the elements of the vector we're multiplying on top so that you see what is happening at every single row that we're multiplying. So we're multiplying f first row, so 1 multiplies 0, 2 multiplies 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, and 6 multiplies 1, so it shifts six from the last position of the vector to the first position. And it circulates the whole vector this way. Now you can see that in the second element we are taking the first element of the original vector. In the third row, in the third element of the new vector, we have two. And so forth. Now you can see that this is really useful. Uh, you can then use this kind of operation to shift numbers around and permute them even. So you don't need to have exactly the, uh, the matrix with the one off diagonal. You can put the rows in any order to produce uh, specific permutations or specific group permutations here. Uh, for example, you could have another matrix, say, that would look like this. ones and zeros. Then make sure that every single row has at least one one. And so you can see how this permutation matrix here would operate uh, on a vector. Picking, up. Picking the elements out according to the order of the elements in the original permutation matrix. So here we take first the third element and then we take the second element, and then we take the fourth element, and then we take the first 
element, and then we take the fifth element. So this is a permutation matrix. So in the first case, we had a circulation matrix, and in the second, we had a permutation matrix. So this is all just to give you an idea of the potential that you have when you design your own matrices to shift vectors around. And so this is one of the learning goals of this project with the Fibonacci, to understand how you manipulate the elements of the vectors uh, to reflect certain operations you might want to achieve. In the Fibonacci exercise, you're asked to compute the last uh, or the first 20 elements of the Fibonacci series. We already know that 1 and 2 are givens, and because it's a Fibonacci series, we also know that there are vectors of coefficient c has 1 and 1. Neat! And now we have to construct a matrix that will, for every single iteration, sum the two last elements of the series so that we know that our first row is going to be equal to the coefficients that we need. We also know that the elements we need to produce x and minus 1 are the last two elements. So we then produce an output vector that contains the new element in the series, x and minus 1, and copies the last element of the series. That's going to be useful because, well, as you can see, for the next iteration we are using the same two last elements. So what we do here, the, the, the missing line in this matrix, is the one that is going to be shifting what was x, n, to the bottom of our output. So we're just going to use that idea with the shifted diagonal matrix here. 1 and 0. And this is the matrix we've been all waiting for. So, if you now multiply uh, the initial vector, you would get something like this. This is our operator matrix. This is the initial vector. And this is going to give you the next element of the series on the top, which in this case is 1 again. And the it will shift the bottom element, 1, and so this is going to be our xn plus 1. If we do this again with the result, you see the next element of the Fibonacci series appearing on the top, and then the shifted top element, and so forth and so on. By this matrix, and take the result and multiply it again 20 times, you will be producing your series, your whole Fibonacci series. So this is one example of how we uh, use uh, matrix multiplication uh, in a recursive fashion to produce a series. And there are other properties that are useful that we will also discuss in a project, such as, you know, when we know that this matrix here, uh, the blue matrix is static, then uh, we can uh, co compute to the nth element of the sequence without computing the previous elements, for example. And this is how we can generalize it to every series. We use the Fibonacci, only two elements, but we could have as many elements as we want uh, being used in our, uh, in our new element of the series. For instance, we can use uh, x of n, uh, x n minus 1, all the way until x of n minus n minus 1, produce a new vector where our top element is n x, uh, is x n plus 1, all the way to x n plus 1 minus n plus 1. As you can see, it's one number uh, larger than the one we had before, and so we're basically shifting one number into the future. And then we have our matrix that has the coefficients in the first line, so C1, C2, all the way to Cn, and then is going to be shifting all of the other elements. And then the last element here in the last row is going to be 0, as you can see, because we shifted the whole diagonal down. There would be another element uh, down here, but obviously it doesn't exist, because we're only using the last n elements to produce n plus 1. And so when we multiply uh, by the last state vector, this guy here, the last element is used to multiply by the last uh, coefficient, but it disappears in the, your new vector here, because now we're shifting all of the elements to 
n plus 1, and so this, ele list, this last element will no longer be used for the computation of the new element in the series. And here we're talking about the generalized uh, series, no, generalized recursive additive series. And this is how you make a generalized pineapple. I invite you now to find the Fibonacci numbers on the skin of the pineapple by uh, potentially counting the numbers in a sequence. No notice these little uh, pentagons here that make out the pineapple, and you can count them in different ways. And uh, depending on how you count them, uh, you actually see the numbers in the Fibonacci series. I'm not going to do this now. I'm going to leave you this as uh, a further exercise for your own amusement. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little tutorial and that it clarified things. If you had comments, uh, please uh, address them directly to me afterwards. So enjoy it very much and we will discuss the solutions at the end of our next lecture.